Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, hello everyone, this is Hamayu and in today's video, I'll be showing you how to estimate the propensity score matching while using Stata software. Uh, well, before moving forward towards the proper calculation or estimation, I would like to shed some light on the, on the propensity score matching that where do we use it and how do we use it. Uh, well, when there is a policy intervention, uh, uh, we are always interested, you know, in the impact of that specific policy intervention. For example, uh, if government is interested, you know, in the, you know, in the increasing the yield per acre by the farmers, you know, and they want to train the farmers. And in that specific region, for example, there are 50,000 farmers and government trained 10,000 of them. So after that training, what they are actually interested in the impact of that specific training. So those 10,000 that receive the trainings are actually the treated group. And those 40,000 that, you know, hasn't received the trainings are actually the control group. Actually, there are a lot of techniques to find out the impact of the treatment. For example, a very simple technique is the T-test. What T-test actually does, it calculates, you know, the difference between the mean income, you know, in this case, the, the mean difference between the yield per acre of, you know, of those farmers who have actually received the trainings and uh, against of those farmers which hasn't received the training. But there are always issues associated with this. For example, if you look at this specific slide, uh, in the treated group, we have seven individuals and in the control group, we have seven individuals. But if the color uh, represents certain characteristics of them, then we see that in the treated group, we have four green uh, individuals, while in the control group, we don't have any green uh, individual. For example, if this green represents, you know, the wealth of the farmers, so what if the treated group that we have selected uh, has farmers which have, you know, higher income, so they can use, you know, multiple sort of uh, fertilizers and other things what if actually that fertilizers has you know increased the yield per acre rather than the specific training so this is actually the selection bias so we always face with the problem of selection bi bias and there are always you know factors that comes from uh, back door and you know play its part and you know we cannot you know conclude the results with accuracy that whether the treatment has actually impacted, you know, the, the treated group or not. So in order to deal with the specific selection bias problem, there are multiple techniques. But in today's video, we'll be talking about, you know, the propensity score matching technique. And we'll be using the Stata software to estimate this specific technique. Before wasting any more time, let's move forward towards the calculation of the propensity score matching while using Stata. So uh, if I show the data, uh, let me show you this data. If you see, uh, there are a lot of variables in this data. Uh, but the most important variable that we need to consider is actually this training uh, variable. This training variable has two outcome, no or yes, no means the those individuals who have who hasn't received the training and yes me shows those individuals who have received the training and what actually uh, we do in the propensity score matching propensity score matching you know actually calculates the probability of individuals to be selected in the treatment group in the treated group on the basis of certain characteristics so what are those characteristics here there are a lot of characteristics like area whether the the farmer or whether this specific person or individual is living in an urban area or you know in a rural area this is not this data is not of the farmers this is actually the data of you know people who got training uh, of certain self employment you know techniques and on the basis of this specific training they are actually uh, trying to gauge that whether their real income has increased or not what uh, we have to do for it, first of all, uh, let's, you know, uh, assign the variables uh, that whether which variable is a treatment variable and which variable is our outcome variable. So for that, we need to use the global function. Global and 
our treatment is what is our treatment that is actually this training variable this is actually our treatment variable so we have assigned this training variable to be used as the treatment variable and what do we have in our you know uh, output variable output variable we will use this function global y list and our output variable is actually the real income so we are actually trying to investigate whether there is, you know, a sort of impact on the real income or not by the specific uh, intervention. So this is actually the real income. So this is our Y variable. We have saved it. And now the most important is the X variables, the independent variables. Those are actually the characteristics on the basis of which we will be calculating the propensity score, the probability that whether certain individual will be selected in the treatment or not. And on the basis of those probabilities, we will be matching the individual selected in the treatment and those individuals who are not actually selected in the treatment, um, they are located in the control variables, but they have, you know, a sort of characteristics similar to those appearing in the treatment group. So we will be comparing uh, uh, individuals in the treatment treated group and in the control group with the similar you know sort of propensity score matching so uh, what do we have in those you know special characteristic variables uh, we call it as x list and we have uh, for example important variables area that's important urban area rural area sex is important uh, education is very important, age is important, and we have in another variable, the number of hours working by each individual, because this is also very important. Maybe we have selected an individual in the treatment group who is earning, who is actually earning a lot, but that's not due to the treatment, but that is actually the number of hours that he is actually working. So this is our X list. We have assigned the the, we now we have the, our treatment variable, we have our dependent variable, and we have all our independent variables. Now let's see before moving forward towards the propensity score matching. Let's see whether there is a difference between you know the treatment or the control, or there is no difference. So for that, let's use this by sort function. This is a very important function. You all need to understand it. By sort dollar sign is very important here after you know declaring it as global so you have to use the dollar sign treatment and then summarize you know uh, dollar y list and dollar x list see the first table is actually showing those individuals who are in the control group and if you see their real income average is actually 2345. And if we see the treatment group, their real income average is 2844.732, which is actually higher than, you know, the of the control group. Similarly, if you look at the area, it's 0.67. Uh, it means that most of the individuals who actually has received the training are from 67% of them are actually from the urban area. One represent urban and zero represent rural. So similarly, in the treatment group, 78% uh, from the urban and the rest of them are from the rural areas. If we talk about sex, uh, zero represent female, one represent male. So 39% are actually male. Uh, again, 39% are actually male in the treatment as well. Education, the average education in the control group is 5.817 years and the average age in the treatment is 9.19, which is higher. So I, I, I already told you that there might be, you know, the impact due to certain other factors, not due to the treatment. Look at here, the education is exact. There is exact difference between the education. Similarly, age, uh, look at the age. The average age of the control group is 31.95, while the treatment group 25.68. So the, the treatment group, the people in the treatment group are actually younger than the control group. It might be the cause of, you know, the increase in the income rather than the, you know, the, the treatment 
rather than that specific intervention. So that's why a propensity score matching is very important to be used in this specific case. How can we use it? For that, we, we can use this p-score function. p-score function is very important. So what do we need for it? Treatment, p-score function, p-score, and then dollar sign treatment, and then dollar sign x list. Remember, here we don't use, you know, the, the y variable because we are calculating the propensities score, the probabilities on the basis of those characteristics that, that are actually included in this x list. And then we need to give a comma here and then we will be telling it to calculate us the p-score. So p-score bracket my score, I'm giving it, you know, a name. So it will actually calculate a new variable. I'm naming it as a my score, which will be showing the propensity score of each specific individual, the, the probability of being selected in the treatment or not of every specific individual. Another is very important block ID function, block ID, and I'm naming it as my block. Uh, this actually tells about, you know, the number of, you know, individuals or the number of observations to whom a specific individual has actually m matched to. I mean, the, the number of individuals to whom, you know, the specific observation is actually has the same uh, sort of propensity score. So this is also important. So if I run it, it will give me a lot of, you know, details. Uh, let me give you a very brief overview of those details, specifically of this. So the largest propensity score that we receive is the, uh, okay, the largest propensity score that we receive is actually 21%. So 21%, you know, chances of an observation to be selected in the treatment group. So the largest is 21% and the smallest is that is actually is 0.2%. So that is actually propensity score. Now, if I show you the data, uh, it must have calculated those three var variables. Propensity, the one will be my score and second one is my block. My score is actually, it has calculated the propensity score, which is, you know, the probability of being selected in the treatment. And my block is actually the number of, you know, observation that the certain observation has actually match to or whether it is actually matching. For example, the first two observation has zero matches. So they are not matching to certain obs other observation. But this specific propensity score, this observation, observation three, has one match in the treatment. So this is important. This is very important to understand. Similarly, uh, if I show you uh, one other thing that is important. Okay, this is actually the number of blocks. Uh, the blocks, the number of observation that has matched to uh, 68 that has received training are actually matched to 3227 with a propensity score of 0 0.012. An individual to be selected in the treatment group, 68 are actually treated and 3227 are in the control. So 68 are matched with 3227 of the control group. Similarly, with a propensity score of 2.5%, 143 in the treatment has actually matched with 3454 of the control. So, move on, you can see the others as well. Now, we are going to calculate, you know, the exact, you know, average treatment of the treated effect. So there are three types of, you know, propensity score matching techniques. You can Google it. You can search it on ChatGPT or wherever you want. But the first one is the nearest neighbor. So for that, we need to use the ATT and D function. Nearest neighbor is actually calculating the propensity score of certain observation with its closer propensity score. So we call it as nearest neighbor, ATT and D. So for that function, the first thing that we will be needing is the dependent variable that is Y list, which is actually the real income. And then we'll be needing the, you know, the treatment, dollar treatment. And then we'll be needing those X variables, 
which is, you know, x, which are actually saved in the x list, and then a comma, and after a comma, we have to use this p score my score. So, if we look at this, the ATT is actually 285.649, which shows that the treatment has actually a higher, you know, real income of $285 per month than those in the control group. So there is actually an impact of this, you know, treatment. If there is a treatment effect, but after using the propensity score matching, so so thank you very much for watching my video. Uh, I hope it will be helpful in the calculation uh, of your propensity score matching. Keep watching my channel. Thank you so much. Love this.